Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I am going to discuss the surgical procedures used in the treatment of fistula in ANO. So first we should know what is a fistula in ANO. It is defined as basically the tract, a tract lined by granulation tissue connecting the anal canal or rectum and the perianal skin. So this is a model which I have made. This is the anal opening. This is the perianal skin. This is the internal of the rectum and anal canal. So, and I have made three fistulas in it. So fistula, a fistula has basically two openings. So uh, one is the external opening which is slightly elevated and the other is the internal opening which has which is slightly pitted. So you can feel the pit on palpation. So basically fistulas are of two types. Uh, low anal fistulas and high anal fistulas. Their treatments are different because their depth is different. So now I'm going to discuss the surgical procedures used in the treatment of fistula in Eno. There are three surgical main three surgical procedures. One is fistulotomy, the other is fistulectomy, and the third is seton. So fistulotomy, as the name indicates, it lay opens the fistula. In this procedure, we lay open the fistula, we open the fistula so that all the um, pus and things are drained and the tract, it then heals itself. The second is the fistulectomy, as the name indicates. In this, we remove the whole fistula. Like in thyroidectomy, we remove the thyroid. So in fistulectomy, we remove the, we cut around the fistula's tract and we remove it. And the third is seton. Seton is basically a thread that is passed through the fistula's tract and it has two types, either draining seton and cutting seton. So, now I'm going to demonstrate to you all the three procedures. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you the first procedure that is fistulotomy in which we lay open the tract. So this is performed in only the low anal fistulas. So what we do is we pass a probe through the external opening to slowly and smoothly so that we don't create a new track. Now you can see the probe has been passed and it has entered the anal canal. So now we know the exact track. Then we would do is that we just cut it and lay it open. So this was our track and we curated all the granulation tissue. And allow it to heal by secondary intention. We just do the dressing. Or we can stitch it in some cases. So this was fistulotomy. This will heal itself. And you can see that we cannot perform this procedure in high anal fistulas because in, a, in that case, major part of the sphincter will be cut and it will lead to anal incontinence. Now it's done for fistulectomy. So in fistulectomy, we basically remove the whole tract by cutting around it. So in order to do that, we have to identify the tract. And we can do it by either injecting methylene blue dye in it like this in the tract through the external opening or we can pass a probe through it slowly and smoothly to identify it and then we cut all around it so the probe has been passed you can see it is coming out from the other end and the dye has also spilled through the opening so now we are going to cut around it to remove the tract
hope this procedure is not performed the way I did. So this was fistulectomy. You can see that the external renal sphincter is preserved and the tract is removed. Now there is no granulation tissue inside so the tract can heal. So now I'm going to demonstrate to you the cetone. Cetone is basically of two types, draining cetone and cutting cetone. So I pass a probe through the fistula, a probe with a hole, and then I'm going to pass the thread or the cetone through the hole and pull it out. My procedure is of course not exact because I don't have the exact tools, but it's similar to what is actually done. Hope so. So now I tie it. Draining cetone is kept loose, tied loosely. So this is a draining cetone. Its advantage is that the person can move it to and fro and drain the fistula. The draining cetone can be removed after about 3 to 4 months when it is ensured that the fistula is free of infection. And after removing it, you can close the internal opening through anal flap, anal mucosal flap. So the cetone is removed in this way. And then through the anal opening, this was the internal opening. So you create a V-shaped anal mucosal flap. And then you re-suture it again by extending it over the internal opening. So, so you close the internal opening. So in this way, the fistula heals. So now I'm going to demonstrate the cutting cetone. So in cutting cetone, the thread is passed in the same way and then some to and fro cutting motion is done and then the cetone is tied very tightly like this. And the patient is asked to return in about a week when the cetone becomes somewhat loose. So when the patient returns after a week, you, and you can see the cetone is loose, you reopen it and do some to and fro cutting motion and remember this all is done under general anesthesia and then tie it tightly again you will see that each time the fistulous opening is coming nearer and nearer to the inner sphincter and it is healing side by side so when the patient again returns after a week, you can see that cetone has become loose. You again reopen it. And again do some cutting to and fro motion and the cetone is removed and it has the anal sphincter and all the skin has healed itself. So in cutting cetone, we have basically cut through the sphincter but as we have done it very slowly over a period of months so this leads to so the sphincter basically heals itself and it does not lead to incontinence it is basically similar to the experiment we do in schools uh, the experiment of passing a wire through a block of ice and which does not uh, and the ice does not cut through while the wire passes through it so that's it thank you hope you found it easy